What's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography and today I'm going to teach you how to make this cool yet pretty simple clone split effect. This is something that I used in my videos a couple times and recently saw in actually the last episode of Sports Videographer Reacts that we did on this channel and it kind of inspired me to make a tutorial about this effect because it's a really fun effect and it's one that is kind of nice to have in your kit because it makes your videos look a lot more complex when it doesn't actually require such a big lift on your end. So let's dive into Premiere Pro and After Effects and get this going. So I'm here in Premiere Pro and I've started by just applying a regular color grade from my football video LED pack, which is available on my website, shameless plug. And we're just gonna play this clip through to see where we're at and let's actually trim it down to size too. So we have our quarterback, he makes a pass, the receiver dives and makes the catch. And then we get a little bit of a reaction shot here. And we're gonna create kind of a clone split effect right here as the receiver's catching the ball, he'll kind of split off. And then as he makes the catch right about there, he's gonna split and all the splits are gonna like come back into himself and it'll kind of create an impactful effect to place emphasis on this diving catch that this receiver is making. So let's start by actually speed ramping this clip to create a bit of a slow motion right before the catch and then speed up right as this catch is being made to further emphasize that impact of the catch. And then we're gonna bring this into After Effects. So I'll turn the color grade off for now, just so we can see what we're working with. And let's go show clip keyframes, time remaining speed. Just right click on your clip to get to this menu. And now we're gonna go to where this catch is about to be made, maybe just before, so about here. And then hold command and click and then we're going to drag to create our speed ramp. This clip is in 60 frames per second and we're going to set our sequence if I haven't already, and I haven't, to 23.976 frames per second so that we can use 40% slow motion. So right here, we're going to slow our clip down and here the catch is made. So we're gonna to wanna to speed up from there and let's slow this part down to 40%. And just to complement that, we can even unlink the audio place a couple cuts, move this along, and then play this audio to 40% as well. And we'll just crossfade those. So now we have a bit of a slow-mo effect and the speed up. Now let's set an out point. We're going to click Command M and export this at full resolution and bring it into After Effects. And yes, I know that dynamic link exists, but when you bring a clip that's 60 frames per second into After Effects and then place it on a 24 frame per second timeline to Roto, it just gives you like these weird frame mismatch issues that become a little bit tedious to work around. I find it a lot easier to just export a full resolution version here and then bring that QuickTime file into After Effects and work with it over there. Just makes more sense to me. So let's change this. Our format is going to be QuickTime. We're going to go Apple ProRes 444, match source, bring our depth up because this is 10-bit footage use maximum render quality render at maximum depth and we'll select our quick time gamma compensation LUT and we'll export from there and i will see you in after effects all right so we're here in after effects with our clip that was edited in premiere and put in slow motion i'm going to create a composition with it and we're going to check the composition settings here and we can see that it's already 4k 23.976 frames per second which is perfect so now we're going to go through and right where the slow motion effect kind of begins, we're going to place a marker. So right there is where the slow motion begins. So let's hold option and click M, which is the shortcut that I've set to create markers in After Effects. I don't think that's the default one, but it's intuitive for me. And then we'll figure out where the slow motion effect ends, which is about there. So option and M. And between these markers is where we're going to use the roto brush effect. So let's copy this with command D and then we're going to turn off the bottom layer and we'll use option and the left bracket and then option and the right bracket to trim the clip up here to only be the part that we want to roto brush. And you can see because I've had this layer off, there's nothing there. Now we're going to double click into this. For, make sure that for your windows, you're in the effects window. If you go to like the default window or something, your effects won't be there, but click window and then go to the effects window. And then we're going to select this guy up here, the roto brush tool. And then in the layers panel, with the duplicate clip that we've cut down and identified as the area that we want a roto brush selected. We're going to zoom in and select the player who we want a roto brush. And then you can see that the roto brush effect appears here. You wanna make sure you're on roto brush version 2.0. And then we're going to just start doing a rough trace 
of this player. And but this is going to be kind of like a stylized, glitchy clone effect, so you don't need to do it perfectly necessarily, but you want this to be pretty good. As you can see, there's a lot of other like legs and just players nearby on this. So we're not getting the cleanest roto ever on this specific clip. When you're picking a clip to do this effect on, you, you ideally want to pick a clip where there's not many other people around the receiver, where you have lots of depth of field, and where the receiver is not covered at all. Like there's nobody in front of him who crosses in front of him at any point. So this clip, it's doable. And we're going to do it for this tutorial, but it's not necessarily the fastest clip to apply this effect on. All right, that's fairly good. Now we're just going to let this roto effect go forward and we'll see how well it picks up on tracing this guy. And the answer is not too well. We're gonna have to go back and make some adjustments to that. All right, let's make some adjustments. We'll go frame by frame and just fix these up. So you can see right here between his legs, like he's wearing light blue shorts or light blue pants and then there's like this whitish light blue sign and these black legs that kind of conflict with the dark jersey. And it's kind of difficult for After Effects to really pick all of that up. But again, this doesn't need to be like perfect, perfect, perfect. It just needs to be decent. All right, well, you kind of understand how like roto brushing works at this point. I'm just gonna do all these frames and I'll check in with you after. We finally got everything roto brushed now. So just to lock in all of the hard work that we've done here, we're going to click freeze right here. And this is going to keep all of our frames in place so that as we make adjustments to these clips, move them around, make any changes that we're gonna make through the rest of the tutorial. The cutout doesn't adjust and the roto brush doesn't try to correct things that we've already done, even if it corrects wrong because if you don't click the freeze button that happens sometimes anywho everything is frozen now so you can see if i come back to the composition panel we have this cutout our player going up getting the ball and then kind of going to the ground and that's on top of this clip of the actual play so now is the part where we actually get to make the clone shift so let's duplicate our clone we'll actually rename this to clone underscore middle and I will duplicate this with command D and we'll call this clone underscore right. And now let's turn off everything else here and we're just gonna play with the look of this clone to try to get him how we want. So I'm gonna start by grabbing the Venetian blinds effect and we're gonna add that first and I'm actually getting my effects by not going to this effects panel but rather clicking space and control to bring up this nifty little search bar which is available from a plugin called fx console by video copilot it's free it's linked in the description if you work in after effects i highly recommend you get it but let's mess with these venetian blinds we're going to change the transition completeness to get these little lines and let's change the direction to 90 degrees so that they go sideways and we can change the width to kind of make these lines like a little maybe like six and the transition completeness can vary a bit as well. And this is going to give us a bit of a flickering effect. So now if I hold option and click on transition completeness, it's gonna give me the opportunity to write an expression. And we can just write wiggle, and then we're going to open our brackets. And now the first number we write here is going to be our frequency. So this is going to determine how many times per second the transition completeness of this Venetian blinds effect is going to change. And then the second number that we write is going to be the amplitude, which is the parameters in which it can move. So let's say we want this transition completeness of the Venetian blinds effect to wiggle 10 times per second. Then we'll add a comma. And then we'll say how far we want it to wiggle. So we've currently got the transition completeness set to 16%. I'm going to set the amplitude to 10, which means that 10 times per second, the transition completeness is going to wiggle between 6%, which is 10% lower than 16, and 26%, which is 10% higher than 16. So now if we click on that, we can play this for you, and you can see that we kind of get a little flicker as we go through. Where here it's kind of more translucent, and here it's less translucent. 
but I feel like maybe this amplitude wasn't fast enough. Let's try 20. And maybe we need the frequency and amplitude to both be higher. So let's turn that up and then bring this to like 25. So now it'll be very fast and it'll be more noticeable. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's just turn this down a little bit, but I like that range and that speed. Oh yeah, okay, you can really see the flicker now. That's pretty good. Now let's turn everything else on. And let's add a Lumetri color effect now. I want our guy here to be a little bit more desaturated than the rest of the image. I can imagine these clones having kind of like a faded hologram type of look. We're not gonna go like so deep into it, but you know what I mean? I want the, these clones that separate from this guy's body to be a little bit distinguishable. So now that's what the regular player looks like and his hologram is going to be a little bit discolored like that. Then let's also add a glow effect. And we're gonna have to mess around with the glow. I kind of want this to spread a little bit more. So let's turn the radius up. Intensity can come down a little bit. Maybe like that. That's not bad. And let's actually do a wiggle effect on the intensity. So we'll have that wiggle 10 times a second and by, we'll have it wiggle by 0.2, but I'm gonna change the value to 0.3 so that we never end up with a glow value of zero. So now we have this effect where the receiver is kind of changing colors and looks like a little bit of a hologram or whatever, but he's still just on top of himself. There's no actual clone yet. We haven't created that animation. So what we have to do for that is actually use position keyframes and a little bit of motion blur to make him separate from his body and then come back. So we're going to click P to get to position and let's click S as well in case we wanna play with our scale properties just to have it up. And then we're gonna zoom in a bit here and now we're going to animate the position of this guy. So let's click on the stopwatch next to position and we'll come forward one, two, three frames. And then we're going to move our clone off to the right. He was at 1920. Let's put him at 2320. We'll have him come back maybe like right here. So another keyframe there, and then one, two, three. And then have him go back to 1920. And let's just grab all of these and bump them over one frame. And then we can maybe ease the opacity in here. So let's hit Shift and T to bring up opacity and we'll keyframe our opacity at 100% when this effect starts, like that, just for the one clone. And then we'll set the opacity to 50% for the frame before. So now we go from 0% opacity to 50% opacity to 100% opacity. Hey, quick note that I noticed while I was editing this, the opacity that I set for these clone layers when I was editing was a slow ramp up to 100%, but I later off camera decided to bring the opacity of these clones down to max out at around 50%. So as you're editing the three, just keep in mind, keep the clones at 50% opacity. It kind of makes the flicker effect look better. I think it's a little bit more distinguished from the actual real person when you have the clones at lower opacity than them. So just wanted to make that note now before you get through the rest of this tutorial. So the effect kind of fades in over top of the guy and then we get the pull out. That's good. Now let's highlight all of our position icons and we can get rid of the opacity icons. So just hit shift and T again, that'll go away. And I don't think we're gonna play with the scale. So hit shift and S. We'll highlight all of these, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now those have all been eased in and eased out, which is going to give us some sort of quick movement here. You can see it quickly goes out and quickly comes back in, but it's still not really a smooth movement and there's no motion blur, which makes it look a little bit weird. So we're gonna highlight these all again. We'll go into our graph editor and we're going to pull these a little bit in to kind of make this movement happen more seamlessly. That's about equal. There we go. And now let's click right here to enable motion blur on this specific clip and play that back. That looks a lot better to me. No, but it might be nice to add a little bit of a warp. So let's grab warp right here. And now we have like this wave warp effect that we've created here where we do a wave, a vertical warp axis, and we can bend him in or out. So we're gonna animate this warp to kind of bend out as the player is going out and bend in as the player is going in. 
So let's bring up our effects here. We have our warp effect. Maybe right here we animate it to zero. And then we go forward one, two, three. And maybe like right in this middle here, this is where we should have our warp be the most distorted, kind of like that. And then go forward one, two, three again. And have this at zero. Maybe bring that back one. Eh. Or maybe we actually just leave that where it was and then we hold on this for one more keyframe. So let's highlight all of those. Easy ease them all. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So our bend is zero, one, two, three. Then we'll make it 21. So it's going in. There, one, two, three. And then we'll make it zero. And bring up our opacity. And maybe right here, the opacity can be 100. And here it can be zero. So now we have our one clone effect, which is pretty good. Hmm. You know what, I actually don't like how fast he comes out. We've done all this work. Let's drag the position out a little bit longer. So maybe if this comes out one more frame and this goes one more frame, that might be a little bit better. Maybe we'll stretch that out as well. Stretch that out. Extend our clip one more and bring the opacity one more as well. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so we have one clone down. Now, obviously we need our clone on the other side because it doesn't make sense to just split off the one guy here. I kind of want this to split off both ways. So let's duplicate our right clone. We're going to call this clone left. So here you can see we've gone to the right 400 pixels. We're at 2320 instead of 1920. So now we're going to go to the left 400 pixels. So we're gonna put in 1520 instead of 1920. This should be 1520. And there's our clone the other way. Now he's gonna be bending the wrong way since he's not going to the right, he's going to the left. So let's bring up our warp effect again, and we're going to have to change that as well. So the bend here needs to be 21. The bend here needs to be 21. And this bend is going to be minus 21. Now change this to minus 21. Now the rest of the animations and everything that we've already done is still with this clip and still makes sense. So this is all just gonna work now. And we're going to get those two clones separating and then joining back in at the same time as the catch is made to create a pretty cool effect. So that's most of what we have to do for this effect. Pretty cool, pretty simple. All that's really left to do is bring this back into Premiere Pro and apply the color grade that we already have from my football video love pack. And then this is done and this is the final result. If you like this video and found it helpful, please subscribe to my channel because I post videography and video editing tips tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis and I'd love to have you around for that. If you actually use this tutorial in any of your work, please let me know, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear how you're using this tutorial and I love seeing the work that is made using the tutorials that I post on this channel. Anyways, that's going to be all for this one. So until next time, peace. We have a specific request for a cameo, so you've got to include this at the end of the video. But um, yeah, this is Peach, the new dog. We like her. Peach, say hi to everyone. There's probably a few thousand people watching you right now. I don't think you know what that means. She just licked me on the lips. That's interesting. Okay.